Hello, my name is Chris Snipes, and you are listening to The Melt. Sometimes it is necessary to zoom out on our tiny lives and try to grasp the bigger picture. As a matter of fact, I would go so far as to say that it's of utmost importance that we at least try to grasp the bigger picture. Perspective is our main defense against myopism. Without it, we tend to get mired in the minutia, fall prey to infighting, think that there are seemingly real and concretized boundaries between people and things and ideas. We actually think that there is an us and them, and this is not a mistake. Distractions of this sort are orchestrated so that we all just keep going round and round in the samsaric hamster wheel of cyclical existence, unaware that the hamster wheel was initially set in motion by those who would benefit from our perceived separation. We are told to trust those who tell us that we are bound by matter and that we have but one go around the amusement park, so we best try and grab as many toys as we can and that it's expected that we'll step on a few toes along the way. But as we slowly but surely begin to cut through the fog of social conditioning and fundamentalist dogma, we are beginning to realize that we are capable of so much more. Our perspective is expanding and we are able to see our place in this conglomeration of growing awareness and deepening meaning and purpose. Today's guests, Tolek and Adana, are associated with the Andromeda Council, an intergalactic and interstellar governance and developmental body of aligned benevolent star systems and planets who are here to help us out with that more expansive perspective. On their website, they have been posting about a deep space AI that they explain has motivations that are antithetical to this very expansiveness. I start off the interview by asking them what we know about the nature of this AI. Um, It's a really good question. Uh, Between uh, the different council members that we were talking to, uh, Nahishka, head of security, uh, vice chairwoman, uh, Tanya, uh, chairman Dakra, and especially Nahishka, they've identified that this kind of programming has been around and, if you will, in communication with human-run and operated AI systems here on planet Earth back to the, sis, what did you say, about the mid-1970s? Yes, it, it started about the mid-1970s, that's correct. Right. But it only recently got escalated, uh, let's say maybe in the past uh, 12 to 15 years where it's been significantly ramped up. And it's 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 uh, out there in deep space. It's not managed by uh, by humans. This is not. Let me try this differently. And uh, sister, go ahead and jump in and provide your, uh, you know, your your thoughts as well, but it's not managed by organic beings. So what what does that mean? What do you mean by that? Sis, go ahead. <laughs> what what did you what did you say? Generated by if you will, a, a, a higher intelligence a computer construct. And I said to Chris, uh, it's not managed by organic beings. There are no, no yeah, there are no organic people. You know, no. Whether, you, whether no. you call them 
humans or humanoids or human-like, whether they're reptilian or insectoid, they're not managed by any beings. It's, it's an artificial computer construct in space. That's right. So what, how, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know from what angle to, to ask right. about it. Uh, so then what is the origin? How did, how did this thing develop? Where, where, did, where did it come from? Who built it? Who constructed it? Originally. Sis. Yeah, originally. Yeah. Adana, go ahead. I'm going to try to put this in uh, simple language, uh, only because what uh, Nahiska is giving me images of how it came about was that the, for the lack of a better word, po the positive negative universe. If you look at it this way, we have uh, uh, two, two universe that like a, um, for lack of a better word, I keep seeing it like a, a ping pong table. You got one side, one guy, one side, one guy on the other. And in the middle, you have this net. So from the universe, what I call the negative versus the positive. Okay, we have on this end, uh, the positive, whereas the other universe has the negative. And so the, there are um, intelligence from the from that universe that comes that created this AI formation just by the mere um, geometric thought form pattern. Right, right. They're right. They're thought forms. Well said. Right. Yep. Right, and the thought form patterns have this design materialized in, in its form um, that cannot be seen by the physical dimensions, but they can be tracked by the higher dimensions, uh, such as Nahiska being the head of the defense. They can track it. Um, but it's, we cannot see it on a physical level. And so what the reason for this creation came about a hundred thousand years ago, uh, earth time. So, um, it came across into this universe to create a, for the lack of a better word, a discord among uh, the galaxies within this universe. It's kind of very it's deep in yeah. terms of what I'm seeing. And the only way I can explain it to you is it's a very simple pattern. Sure. And now that it's here in this universe, um, there's a lot of the higher dimensions that are noticing this and they are working to close off the um, portal or gateway that exists between two universes. And they're working on that right now because the AI system is creating problems for um, a lot of the star systems that exist within our own universe here. Yeah. But by the way, I can I can confirm what you're saying from a couple of conversations that I had with uh, our mutual friend, Dan Brock. And he was act he actually showed me an illustration where he said, I don't exactly know how this looks, but there is this cosmic graphical illustration of geometric codes in the higher dimensions. You know, he's trying to explain it using wow. Earth terms. But he had this, this uh, uh, diagram, and he said, within these geometries are a number of algorithms that produce whatever information that this AI wants to release, to share with people. <laughs> so this is something far beyond nuts and bolts and motherboards. This is uh, something on a completely different vibration. Yes. And what... 
do what set it in motion what 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 i mean does it have a reason does it have an intent or is it basically because it is an ai is it is it autonomous is it operating um under its own motivations or is there something pulling the strings i'm pardon me i i i'm naive about this sort of thing so i'm not exactly sure how to ask the questions yeah they're they're all reasonable questions um I can share with you the end result, and I'll let Adana uh, dive into the original source code and motivations, but the end result is to provide continued human programming, continued divisiveness, continued conflict, so that instead of humans unifying and understanding that we have great potentiality, even with all of our diversity, you have in fact, repetitive programming, which continues to divide, cause conflict, cause negative energy, divide, cause conflict, cause negative energy. <laughs> negative cycles of- um... Negative cycles, right. Now, Adana, you want, would you like to address the, uh, the, the, the source code origination of this AI and if you will, what uh, entities set it into motion? Um, this this uh, totally is new information because uh, as you asked me this question, um, it involves the uh, alternate universe. So um, the the name that that the he's got is giving me is is kind of like as. Uh, 984, that's what he sent to my mind. And um, he said these, these beings are not um, organic. They are, they are um, entities that the way he showed me a picture of is kind of like a, a, a nebula type of cloud. It's kind of like a pink cloud. And there are sparks within this nebula, which the production of electrical um, uh, thought forms and um they they want to control uh any organic forms that exist in the galaxies and uh they know that they cannot uh control everyone because of the fact that um, our people, our higher dimensional beings, um, are quite aware of them. And, uh, so they can't really outrun, uh, our advanced technology that we were able to pinpoint where they're at. The problem is it's so widespread that it takes a lot of work from our defense team to create uh, the white frequency, the white coding, because the codes within that AI system changes, just like uh, computer systems, when you know you use random numbers and it keeps creating new numbers. But the same thing with their system, the AI system, to prevent anyone from breaking its system down. However, Nahiska said that there is a number of um, star people from different star systems that are coming together as a team and are creating a um, uh a technology that can 
bypass those codes to where they can get into the system to at least cut off the ties between the beaming of that thought forms into um, the organic forms uh, that try to break them up. And this is what's going on right now. Yeah, and, and, and um, also that uh, the higher, higher dimensional codes, if you will, coding that is being generated will interrupt the streaming of AI data to computers here on Earth. Because the two are communicating. The, the AI in space is communicating with the AI programs that are running on Earth. Um, didn't, uh, you know, without revealing too sensitive information, because we don't want to do that, wouldn't I be correct in saying that these AI-based computers are operating deep underground in the American Southwest? Is that a good description, Sis? Yes. Would it would it be a good guess to um, put out that these maybe are military bases, or is it something much more uh, nebulous than that? I, I I believe it falls within what people might call the shadow government, uh -huh. or the the you know we've used different terms that other people have talked about, but. As an example, the shadow government, the powers that be, the powers that shouldn't be, the matrix supported by members of the Illuminati families, mm -hmm. all of those are involved. However, I don't, I don't know what the percentage is, but those, those there's, there's some, as Chris, I'm sure that you're aware, and I know Adana is aware, there's some small faction of the global populace, very, very small, that has an agenda to eliminate as many earth humans as possible and whichever ones remain, keep them programming, sorry, keep them programmed to serve the elite. And one of the ways to keep people on earth programmed is to embrace and repeat this negative pattern programming among humans mm -hmm. so that it's divisive. And it sets us against each other. Democrats, Republicans, Yankees, Red Sox, uh, and on and on and on. You know, there's, it, it's, it's, it's all about creating divisiveness and negative energy to keep us uh, distracted, if you will, and programmed. Does it also work on a level of sort of um, tricking us into thinking that our reality uh, is limited to, let's say, materialism. Uh, thinking that uh, these earth bodies that we have and this life that we have are all that we, all that there is, and that we, there isn't anything, there's no afterlife, there's no um, body outside of the physical body, there's no um, spirit. Uh, is it is it does it operate on those means or is it basically just simply pitting people against one another in, in, in you know appealing to their tribalism uh, in order to just create conflict and feed off of that energy that comes from that? Well, not only that, but create conflict and fear, which creates more conflict and more absolutely. Fear. Yes. But Adana, do you have thoughts about that? Whether there's more programming going on over and above the creation of conflict and fear? Is it more widespread? Well, here's the thing that uh, the Heathkid was sharing with me right now as you guys were talking, is that you've heard the term secret, behind the secret, behind the secrets. And these elite groups, um, it's kind of like uh, uh, a security clearance for each one. So they are also being controlled by the few that are creating this discord, that are creating the lies uh, for 
everybody, including the military and the um, the government officials, whatever they may be, um, they, they thought that they have the information, which they don't. Um, they're finding out that they're being lied to as well. So uh, this, this widespread worldwide um, discord on every level you could possibly well, think so. of, whether it's government, uh, military, education, uh, social status, uh, economic static, it's at every level you could possibly think of that people are accustomed to for centuries here. Sure. So sort of a brainwashing too, into buying into this system that is oppressing us in a sense. Uh, that's a really good observation. It almost reminds me of uh, uh, George Orwell's prediction of, you know, 1984 and Big Brother. I mean, talk Absolutely. About watching a prophecy come to life before our eyes. I mean, you could even go so far as to say the book of Revelations. I mean, really, the the number of the beasts shall be upon everybody. You know, you will buy nor sell goods unless you go through the beast. The beast could be the system. The beast could be this AI. You know, it could be a lot of things. Not, not that I'm, I'm, I necessarily buy into that cosmology, but it's yeah. an interesting template to lay on top of it. Yeah, I, I got, the, yeah, I got the analogy that you were providing for sure. Um, you know, it, it seems that it, Adana, as you said, even those at the top of the one percent of the one percent who essentially are the global elite. To some degree, even they are getting, for lack of better words, programmed and bamboozled because some of them actually believe that the process of transhumanism is a good thing, you know, to extend the life of an organic human by plug-in parts and chips. And, you know, I'm not talking about somebody's in an accident and they lose their arm. So you can get a synthetic arm from the elbow down or they lose a leg. I think that's a good thing. Sure. But, but extending the human organic life through a variety of implants, uh, merging with computer systems, we're getting way too close to that. Well, I mean, and do you think it's possible that they, you hear people speak of uploading your consciousness, if that is even something that is, I, I don't see that there is any possible way of doing that, but turning one's consciousness into binary code and putting it on a hard drive, that seems a bit ridiculous well, to me. I, we're not, I don't think we're too far from that. I was, um, as I'm apt to do from time to time, doing some intuitive wandering on YouTube. It used to be just the web, now it's of course the web, including YouTube. And I actually found this gentleman who was probably in his, I want to say early 60s, and he was showing people these implants. He purposefully put, and it had been removed during the course, uh, sorry, prior to this interview, but he had an implant in his, so a physical implant in his wrist, and they had an implant in his brain. And he was able to direct a brand new mechanical arm from the thoughts in his brain. Wow. So he, through the use of his brain going through this chip, was manipulating the fingers of this new arm and hand and still quite clumsily, but the fingers were opening and closing and picking up objects at a table because he was thinking and the thought processes driven through the chip made the new prosthetic arm and fingers manipulate. Amazing. So. <laughs> going by that. <laughs> going by that. Uh, how far off is it really from the movie Transcendence? Yeah. Or basically, you know, the, uh, the scientist who's about to lose his organic body. Uh, downloads? 
his whole consciousness into a computer. I, I don't know how far away we are from that reality. Do you, I mean, you both have a, a, a much larger context to um, sort of view all of this stuff by than most of us who don't have the experience and experiences under your belt that you both have. Do you think that something like an AI can truly become self-aware and conscious? Uh, I believe there are two answers to that question, but I'm, I'm going to let, as I'm prone to do, I'm going to let the lady among us speak first, and this time, <laughs> this time around. So Donna, go ahead and share your thoughts and feelings about uh, AI and consciousness, awareness, sentience. Is, is that kind of where you're heading, Chris? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm aware that there are behind the scenes um, experimentations going on in terms of how do they live longer? How do they uh, go from point A to point B, especially out in space? Um, it is going on. Experimentations in terms of the AI, the the uh, implants in terms of making a superhuman organic form, if you will, um, that can last, however long it lasts. This is not what our people um, want for us to see our people, our star people want for us to become more self-aware, more awakened within and change from within out. I've had an experience um, back in 2016 when I had a uh, knee surgery done uh, on my knee, and I will never forget this to this day, about 11 o'clock that night, um, I was a little bit in pain, and they gave me some medicine for it, and I'm looking over at my daughter was sleeping um, on the makeshift couch, and I'm still wide awake, and the nurse, the floor nurse went back to her station, and I had started feeling vibrations humming from the head of my, to the top of my head, all the way through my body to my feet. And I mentally said to my star people, my guys, I said, I'm going to allow this to happen. And what happened was the vibrations of the frequency of that vibration had shifted me from this physical organic wall into a higher dimensional uh, realm that I was in because I heard myself saying, how did I get here? Wow. I mean, just a split second, I was there. Sis, you're, with, you're talking about being out of your body. I was out of my body. There was no physical form. There was only light. And I could see outside of my light, I could see there was no structure in terms of buildings or whatever. It's kind of like everything was curved. And, um, and I stood there waiting. I said, what am I doing here? And then, of course, the, there was a gentleman that came in and knew me. I didn't know the gentleman. He knew me. And uh, it wasn't until later I found out what that was about. But the key, the key point here is this is a trial run for me to understand that when we are ready emotionally, mentally, 
uh, physically, spiritually, when we are aligned in our bodies, you will have the sensations of the humming and the vibr uh, vibrations and the frequency. In a split second, you will be in your higher dimensional form. That's how quick it is. And this is what the star people, our families of the stars, want for us to have. Rather than going through the route of trying to become a superhuman, you know, with the components of the computer system that controls our body. Well, and, and it seems like that transhumanism too is just sort of keeping a, 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 almost like an effort to keep the soul or consciousness bound to matter. Like, well, thank you. Yeah. Thank Does you. that make sense? Yeah, a, a, absolutely. And to, to, um, if you will, if we're on a dartboard talking about this topic and this process to sort of head back to the bullseye, you were ask, asking about a focus on, on consciousness and sentience and how, in fact, how sentient is artificial intelligence. It's it, as it functions uh, as, if you will, maybe it's a small nebula of energy and intelligent an intelligent um, electronic neutrons. <laughs> And I'm not a scientist, so bear with me, but <laughs> imagine this intelligence that is simply an energy mass that has intelligence, that has sentience. Now I'm going to be speak very plainly. It doesn't mean that it has a soul. It didn't come from, and specifically with the AI that we've learned about, as we reviewed in, in that interview uh, regarding those off-planet entities, off-planet creations. As Adana and, and Nahishka and others will testify, there is no record of creation, you know, in terms of literal, the creationism. There was no creator. There was no beginning from source that created these entities we were talking about that were uh, structured and formulated uh, by the AI. It was simply created out of, if you will, electricity. And again, I'm not a scientist, but you know, we're trying to <laughs> talk about uh, a quantum quantum words that I, I as, a, as a, who's not a scientist, am, am trying to describe. But essentially, what I'm trying to say is. These AI beings that were created and others, it's sort of like, oh, yeah, there's, there's a human walking the planet, but that human doesn't have a soul. And uh, if you speak with Alexandra Metters, who we know quite well, and others, they will tell you there are a number of humans walking this planet, that they have intelligence, but they don't have any soul. There's no spark of creation. There's no spark from source. There's no spirit essence. I'm using different words to describe the same thing. Yeah, yeah. AI created beings are simply beings that were created out of computer code, for lack of better words. They don't, they may have sentience, they may have intelligence, they may evolve, but they don't have a soul. They weren't created from source. They're artificial. Interesting. Is that sis? What do you? Is that a? Is that a good description? As I stumble, as I stumble Absolutely. through my lack of science. Yes, okay. <laughs> right. Really well. So now, that, somebody, you know, somebody who's a quantum physicist would probably do a lot better than me, but I, I'm doing my best here. Uh, the day after tomorrow, I'm speaking with a quantum physicist uh, for the podcast. So wow. Yeah, I'll I'll get her take. Yes. <laughs> um. Well, so, so the spark from so no, keep going, Toby. Right. So I was just going to say, whenever I think it's accurate to say, whenever we're talking about 
alleged entities, alleged beings, alleged ETs that don't exist. They don't exist because there's no record ever of them being created from source, past, present, or future. There's simply no record. And as uh, I think it was uh, uh, the chief medical officer, Azar, in this case, was showing Adon, and she's like, well, where did they come from? <laughs> and Adon told me, he's like, there's nothing. They're just, <laughs> they can't show us anything. We have no records. We have no records, right? Literally, no records. Wow. So, you know, if, if somebody, you know, I, I know people that are computer pro programmers, and they've been writing code their whole lives. Well, there's no program that ex that's executed unless somebody creates the, the code to create an end result. So imagine a higher level intelligence writing some code to create an output. Then somebody gives that output a name. Sure. That's AI. <laughs> well, see, I, I think this is where I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not totally clear is because, you know, of course, AI, as the little that I know about it, is you set a certain set of parameters and then included in those parameters is the ability to learn, learn from experience, to interact with your environment, so on and so forth. And, and to, then, to, to perpetually evolve. Perpetually evolve. So this AI that you both were speaking of that is uh, now um, out to create chaos and disorder, was it set up to do that or did it evolve into doing that? Ooh, Adana? And what was the question? Was the, the question? was the AI that we're speaking of, was it set up? Was it set up with the intent to create chaos and disorder or did it evolve autonomously to do that uh, of its own intentions? The, the AI system, according to what Nahiska is uh, sharing with me right now, is... Um, is Tulek was saying a while ago that they have no soul to begin with. And so the AI entities, for the lack of a better word, um, electrical pulses, thought forms, geometric right. forms, um, they, they expand to, to create this core. Did they make a decision to create this core? That's not what I'm getting from Nahiska. It's just uh, the electrical impulses of their frequency. Uh, it's just there to 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 expand to uh, continue to create this cord. Um, it takes a special type of advanced technology equipment to break it down. And the organic um, organic forms, organic like human forms, we don't have that capacity to break it down because we, we are not advanced enough to reach into the higher dimensional realms to, to put a stop to AI's activities. And um, uh, this is as far as what Nahiska is, is showing me right now, and the way he explained it to me is that uh, it's kind of like um, he's showing me like, a uh, lightning storm here on Earth, and you know, a light electrical lightning storm uh, can feed off of each other and expand and hit the land uh, with its electrical impulses, which is the same way that the AI system is doing is is spreading through the electrical current and whatever planet they're touching. Uh, it offsets the um, ley lines and grids of its own electrical 
current to create that discord within the yeah, yeah. And and sis, itself. Um, Vice Chairman Tanya has given me an image. She's showing me sort of like this, if you will, um, uh, bulging and expanding nucleus. And for lack of a better word, this, this nucleus of electricity, whenever it was created, by whatever it create by whatever created it there was if you will i'm using a metaphor instead of a bullseye instead of a dartboard that was provided there was a bullseye a goal and the goal was be self creational so that you 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 being the, the, the nucleus entity the ai would continue to evolve to create new algorithms to provide whatever methods are necessary to keep humans disrupted and at each other's throat and divided on and on and on. It's like new branch, like a tree, new branch, new branch, new branch, new branch, new branch, new branch ad infinitum. Mm -hmm. And those new branches would be different, different, way, different right. ways of, of, of uh, creating discord and discord. And conflict right. so since you know us 3d humans don't have access to, well maybe we do i don't know uh to these higher this higher dimensional uh ai um what we can do to counteract that would be not to fight to, to unite to to love each other to create harmony right i mean that's that's what we can do within our grasp right is that what that be a good way of putting it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, sister, what he just said was that uh, what we can do as, as individual humans on this planet, and as we join together, there's more unity. Uh, but essentially what Chris was saying is if we make individual choices to be kind and loving toward each other and to not engage in, if you will, uh, argumentative discord kind of situations, we can have control over our own lives simply because we're making better choices not to engage. Is that, Sis, does that make sense to you? Yes, it does. Um, one of the things that I was shown uh, last couple of days, um, talking about unity. Uh, this is what uh, Chairman Dockwood and all of the council members want for us is to put aside our differences and come together in unity. It doesn't matter what background, what belief system, what culture, all of those things um that we grew up with is to learn to love one another to be mindful and respectful of each other's patterns of growth that we have been accustomed to um, throughout our childhood life into adulthood um, there will come a time where there will be a level of maturity where people can understand better by their own life experiences and choices that they have made over their lifetimes to find ways to come together in a, a loving, peaceful way. That itself is much, much more powerful than anything could ever be. And um, I have often said, uh, love is the most powerful force in God's many universes. That's what I usually say, um, because I have seen so many different star people from different walls and evolutionary patterns that they have been brought up in and uh, amazing how they get along respectfully toward each other 
this is what they want for us here on the planet to realize that we have the power and control from within our own heart to make a difference, make a change, break that chain of bondage that has kept us here for centuries. That's another way of looking at it, is that instead of continually going around in circles, right. break the chain. And that's what breaks off that discord that comes into a more loving, peaceful way. And I, there's one example I want to share with you because it's been on my mind for two days. Is that, uh, as many of you know, of um, uh, Angelina Jolie, and she had adopted all of these different children from different right. countries. She herself had said. I'm going to make sure that each child of mine gets reconnected with their um, country, the birth of their country, wherever they came from, so they could reconnect that um, cultural ties. And yet, they are all together with love, with unity. I think that's one example that I'm seeing that if more and more people would be like her and like us, then it sets off this chain reaction that there is always hope for our people here. This is something that uh, uh, Chairman Dakwa wanted for us to know that not to give up no matter how difficult things may seem on this world there will be a greater outcome of peace and joy and uh, being in wonders with one another it will come if we could just hang on for a little while longer and be patient. That definitely seems doable. Yeah. And we, we need to be patient. I, I don't mean the three of us, but we <laughs> as a global society, as individuals, need to be patient when someone else's choices, someone else's thinking doesn't align with ours. Um, there are some notable people out there, including... Uh, Geez, like uh, who he's passed now, but Dr. Wayne Dyer, um, uh, Alfred Weber, a futurist, uh, Simon Parks, a extremely bright man with extremely gentle heart. And all of these men in different ways talk about uh, coming together, uh, living from the heart, unity consciousness, and the value of unity consciousness. And unity consciousness I believe at its core simply allows each one of us to be who we are inherently and yet allow for somebody else to be different and who they are. And there's no conflict. It's just acknowledgement of difference. And if, if we were able to achieve that, then we would basically render that nasty old AI irrelevant yeah, really, really good point. And as Donna and I have talked about, um, and uh, as as and the point has been driven home by uh, Chairman Dakra as well as Vice Chairwoman Tanya, the Earth as a single unitary body, as a unified planet, will not be asked, and they will. But here we go. Just follow the progression. We won't be asked to form our own joint earth council we won't be asked to join the andromeda galactic council and its galactic federation of planets until we become a planet of peaceful people a planet that is not picking at each other a planet that is not acting like 
sixth grade schoolyard bullies, a planet that exudes instead care, love, concern, and help for each other. When we get to that place that the whole planet is finally at peace, that's when we'll be, we'll be invited <laughs> to join our cosmic and galactic brothers and sisters. And that's when we'll truly experience space and deep space travel because those who are enlightened and part of these peaceful governance and development organizations and societies, they will only enjoin and allow planets and peaceful that are evolved enough to not cause problems out in the universe. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Sis, do you have any additional comments to that? No, brother. I think you said it uh, very well. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Oh, thank it's, you. Yeah, totally. Yeah, it's, totally makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, we've got to, we, you know, if, I know we've said this before, but we really, as a global society, we really need to grow up and become emotionally and spiritually mature people who are beyond hate, beyond avarice, beyond fighting, beyond nitpicking, beyond lashing out. Absolutely. We've done a really good job in uh, evolving on the material plane, but on the spiritual plane, we are lacking. Yeah. But we're getting there. I think we're getting there. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, what was I going to say? I don't remember. And that's actually a pretty deep conversation that we're having right now. But yeah. I love it. Yep. This, this AI is almost like a metaphor in, in a sense. Like, um, you know, if we learn to, to, to unite and come together, we could overcome so many things. I mean, really, it is a state of mind, a state of heart, you know. Uh, the only thing that's keeping us from having a, a paradise on earth is um, our mindset. I, I, I th I, yes, I think that's accurate. At least from my perspective, I believe it's a, a mindset, but more, but first, you know, at the top of the list, I think it's, it's a heart set. Yeah, sure. That, that coming, sense. coming from a place where, you know, you can look at the other person and not prejudge why is he or she angry? Why is he or she lashing out? Why is he or she being mean or hateful? He or she may be doing that, but there may be some really valid reasons why much earlier in his or her life, his or her formulative experiences created that person that you see in front of you. Yeah. You know, there's, there's all sorts of allowances that need consideration when we're dealing with that people are, are like that and, yeah. you know, and people that seemingly are off the rails emotionally. You're absolutely you know, right. Instead of instead of you know trying to correct them, or st instead of judging them in front of them, or I you know do your best to allow and uh, hear that person. I think if there's more allowing from an emotional perspective and more hearing from an intellectual perspective will have greater uh, uh, concordance, greater, uh, um, oh, um, concordance is the best word I can think of, but. Hey, that works. Yeah, I think you get it. It's, it's yeah. we've got to allow for each other. Absolutely. Uh, I Very well put. Yeah, Donna, any thoughts on your end about this? This is a pretty deep topic. Um, I think you said it beautifully and one of the things that I have learned over the years um, is to allow people to be who he or she is at that right. moment in time. Because I understand from what I have been taught by my star family is that each person came in with a set of lessons, a set of experiences, to understand why um, they do what they did and 
what they can do to heal themselves, to resolve any issues they may have when they are ready for it. There are times when if a human being trying to talk to them blue in the face, they're not ready for it. They don't want to hear it. But what we can do for humanity is to uh, send them love within our own hearts and allow them to be because that's part of the universal law in action is free will. And therefore, when you have free will, it allows people to find their own way to whatever station in life they may be. It's, a, it's different than being controlled. If you're being controlled, you're trapped in a jail, a jail cell. And you're not allowing people to be who they are. And so by allowing them the free will, then they can learn to find themselves again, to begin to dig in deep within themselves, to find the answers to all of the questions they may have had most of their lifetime. And once they come to that realization that the answers have already been there waiting for them, then they are ready to take that uh, next step to the healing of their lives, to begin to receive blessings for their lives. There's just so many different things happening in people's lives, and you're talking about centuries of incarnations here up to this point in time. And, you know, this century that we're living in uh, has never been done before in terms of rapidly speeding up the process of healing their own lives that they have carried with them throughout the centuries up to now and to help them to get them ready for the transformation of their own souls you know into a higher dimensional beings that's what's going on right now is is there are so many healers out there today sister you yeah you just struck on a really good point um as an example, uh, Sarah Christine, sorry, Sarah Christine Graham up in Sedona. Uh, Dr. Marie Batch, uh, Dr. Marie Batchelor from Australia, uh, Cheyenne Stone in Central Arizona, and other people have a unique to each person their own unique set of skills, knowledge, and modalities, and training and certification that allow them to facilitate the healing of any one person from a number of different perspectives. And as we talked about before, there's no one specific modality that can help heal someone of a variety of, if you will, negative emotional trauma, impactful life experiences that they carry. There's not one modality, there's a number of modalities. And for one of the first, probably, at least within the context of this civilization, sis, you're absolutely right. We're at a moment when there's a wealth of people called healers who are doing amazing work that are helping people free themselves from all of the negative, if you will, energetic trauma packets that they carry around in their bodies, you know, either in their their uh, sexual organs or in, in, in their, their arms or their legs or their shoulders or their necks or wherever, that's, that energy is stuck. With a lot of people, that energy is stuck traumatic energy that keep, needs to be released. And if it's not released, people will keep acting in the same manner over and over and over and over again. But you, Sis, you make a great point. This is an amazing time to be on planet because all of these people are coming forward with all these different modalities to help people heal 
and to, to realize, their, as Gary Zukov would say, their fully authentic selves. That's when, that's when the real joy of life can begin, when each of us are so clean energetically and so clear emotionally that we can have those new aha moments. I'm like, yeah, this, makes, this is what makes me happy. Yeah, these are the gifts and skills that I have that can help people in these parts, this part of the world. That's what happens when people heal and they get rid of all of that negative energy and clutter that keeps recreating the same situations over and over again. It's, it's, this is an amazing time. And we've seen a number of these people at our conferences and they, they touch hearts and change lives. It's, it's amazing to watch. It really is. It's something else. That sounds fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great time to be alive. Absolutely. Well, there's one other thing that I want to share with you too, besides the healing aspect of people's lives is that it had also never been done before in that multitude of people are experiencing manifestations of uh, higher dimensional beings coming into their uh, realm, so to speak. For example, uh, there have been more sightings than ever before, and people are, the ships are coming closer and closer to the ground so that people can see them. Multitude of people have seen them. There are more uh, Sasquatch appearances. I, for one, have seen one. Remember, brother, Mount up Lemon, in uh, right. Mount Lemon? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I have seen a Sasquatch up there twice, uh, up and going back down uh, Mount Lemon. It was a white Sasquatch. But anyway, um, there are so many manifestations that it's no longer just to the chosen few. It is being shown to many, many people worldwide. So that is another thing that people are experiencing nowadays. They are all wakening up to their missions as well. I've had reports from clients who just needed confirmation because they're awakening up and figuring out what they needed to do to heal themselves, to prepare for the future, uh, to um, work on their earth missions for humanity. So all of these things are happening nowadays. Um, it's, a, it's truly an amazing, amazing time period right now. I am so excited to be born in this era of time to see all of these things happening. And as people, more people wake up, it creates more of a conducive environment for other people to wake up too. Right? Sort of a chain reaction. Yes. 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 There are, there are so many people who have come to me and said, I have seen this, I have seen that, and it's incredibly amazing. But there are still so many people that are not awakened as well. And we must allow them to be where good, they're yeah, at. Good point. Absolutely. Yeah. I think once, you know, I see it, especially you see it in the political spectrum, when people start shouting at one another, that doesn't convince anybody of any argument. It solidifies people in their point of view. It doesn't make anybody more fluidic or flexible. It only hardens people more. And there needs to be more people meeting in the middle, I believe, or at least listening. Yeah, it's... <laughs> You know, I, people can actually feel the energy of anger. They may not realize it, but they can, a person's, okay, so here, here we are. Um, and I'm not a physician, but I know this. <laughs> we are bioelectrical beings. 
that we, 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 uh, we have these electrical signals that go off and anybody that's ever been exposed to an angry crowd and or in comparison, if you are in a concert and some of the tones and pitches that music hits or when a choral group of voices is hitting certain tones or pitches, you can feel the high vibrational energy yeah. or uh, if you're driving down the street and a big truck with a loud sports muffler package drives by, you can <laughs> feel the low bass bravado yes. of that tone as well. So, you know, we can, we're sensitive enough that we can pick up all sorts of vibrations. Absolutely. Um, yeah, there's, there's, there's more stimulus than we realize that we're sensitive to. Absolutely. I think, <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> in type. Yeah, there we go. We're so used to being bombarded with stimulus, especially for people who say keep a television on all the time or got to have some sort of voice going on in the background. Uh, we walk into stores like Best Buy and there's, you know, tons of things on all at the same time. That noise. We, noise. Yes, exactly. <laughs> that we, we forget how much, like, it's almost like we're anesthetized to how much stimulus we receive. And we hardly ever, well, I would say the mainstream, your average person hardly ever has complete silence. And not only doesn't have complete silence, but just sits in that silence and really uses that time to just sort of center yourself or to reflect yeah. so there's no reflection time so it's just bouncing off of one source of stimulus to another and we i think it's we've forgotten how to let the sediment sink to the bottom of the metaphorical glass of water and 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 experience a little bit of lucidity and that's a lost art. And that's, you know, it's too bad that it has to be sanctioned into retreats and meditation centers and stuff like that. I mean, of course, we could all be doing it in our own homes. I do it myself. And I find definite value in that. But yeah, it's easy to, to just become desensitized to just walking outside of your house and all the things that you're bombarded with, you know, we and because of that, we yeah, we do forget how much all of that stuff affects us. Yes. Hey guys, what's what? that? Guess what? I wear hearing aids. I can turn them off. I have my peace <laughs> and quiet. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, yeah. And, well, and sister, as you know, um, I many times have talked about the benefits of simply going out into, into nature. Uh, and even people who live in a crazy dynamic city like New York City or in the center of Houston or Chicago or other places, there are still parks. One way or another, if you want the proverbial you out there, if you want peace in your life, get out of the noise and go walk into a park and listen to the leaves rustle in the trees. Listen to the sound of wind. Take the time to sit down and listen to the sounds of birds. It, it, all these things will help and do help each one of us reconnect with ourselves. It's, it's amazing what happens. Absolutely. Interconnectedness is is unavoidable, uh, unavoidable rather, and it's so easy in our fragmented society to to sort of go into our own silent or not silent, but our own little echo chamber uh, that reinforces whatever state of mind we we wish to pick from, and that could be peaceful, that could be chaotic, that could be listening to Rush Limbaugh every day that could be listening to flute music. It could be anything. So I think it's important to, if we're going to choose to, 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 you know, imbibe in some stimulus to make it something that's nourishing to make it makes it's something that helps us to bring us back to ourselves or helps us to think about or reflect upon things that help to nourish us. Yeah. 
Hey, uh, Donnie, do you remember when we were sitting and listening to uh, Stands With Bear playing his galactic cosmic flute music? You could, you yeah, could hear, I was sure watching. Did. I took a few moments to turn and look at the other people. You could hear a pin drop in that place. They, they were, yeah, there were these I like, know. just these I... looks of amazement, rapture maybe. I don't know if rapture is right, but they were just so, in a positive sense, entranced by the honest, authentic beauty of the music he was creating. It was just, and you could see it. You could see it. Uh, there's certain things I can see, certain things I can't, but I, I could see the the energy in the room. I could see the peacefulness of, of, of the people just being absorbed in his music. And it was, yeah, it was, I, I looked, at, we, I, we talked about this later. We looked around the room and, and we said, you know, it's really sad that only like 30 some odd people showed up because on that particular evening of Sedona Close Encounters, that monthly meeting, we had a private concert that was priceless because he set up his uh, looping computer to record different tracks. Oh, wow. And so he played the flute, recorded that. I think he recorded the flute track last, but he uh, shook a rattle and then he had like two or three other instruments that he laid these tracks down. And then after all the tracks were laid, then he started to play the flute. It was amazing. That sounds, that sounds incredible. I've yeah, seen people just, do stuff like that. Just to watch him compose in front of us. It was yeah. a brand new piece. He was just out of his cosmic essence, essence he was creating this piece. That's fantastic. Yeah. Right on the spot, just kind of making his own band. Yes, yeah. Yeah. There's an artist named Zoe Keating who plays the cello and she does the exact same thing. Only she's, it's all just overlaying cello over cello over cello. Yep. And it's, Oh, it's so amazing. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Well, we are about a little under 15 minutes away from an hour and a half. So I, I am a little hesitant to get into anything <laughs> of any portent because I, I I don't think that we would have enough time to to get into it, into the meat of it. So maybe we can just make a pact to do this in the near future and and continue on 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 more questions and more more um conversation. Would love to. Yeah. Would you be up for that, Adana? Adana? Oh, absolutely. I would, I would love it. I think we had a wonderful time tonight. Fantastic. Yes, I wholeheartedly agree. I'm glad that uh, Tolek asked you to, to join us tonight. It was fantastic. Well, it's been an honor to be here. And uh, I'm, I'm very moved by, by uh, Tolek asking me to come on here and talk with you. And um, this will continue. Absolutely. Absolutely. Maybe we can do it in another month, month and a half. Uh, that sounds great. I'd love to. Cool. Yeah. All right. You know, cool. as we each experience our lives, there are things that we're exposed to and things that we learn. We can, we can tackle some new topics and, you know, we're looking at it from, if you will, a, uh, an inner as well as a higher dimensional perspective. So we can each share what we're experiencing, feeling, observing. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I, I value both of your points of view and perspective very much. So thank you both for agreeing to join me in this conversation tonight. I really enjoyed it. Oh, Chris, thanks so much. Yes. Uh, and, and Donna, thank you for saying yes and for uh, contributing all that you think and feel and, and hear from our, uh, our council member contacts. And, you know, and especially to have a female perspective. Absolutely. It always provides balance to us guys. Yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. We Thank need you. we need balancing. And it was good to meet you, Adana. It's good to meet you too, Chris. I, I really enjoyed it tonight. And um uh I'm so excited that we could share our perspectives and experiences. So I am looking forward to Meet again 
Yes. On our next adventure. Absolutely. Let's do it again real soon, guys. What a very, very interesting conversation. Um, Adana actually was invited by Tolek uh, at the last minute to participate, and I'm very glad that he did that. Um, it was good to have uh, a third party there, and um, she was able to field some of the questions in a way that maybe Tolek uh, wouldn't have. Um, a slightly different perspective, and it was very welcome. So I thank both Tolek and Adana for participating in this conversation. And as we stated towards the end, there will be more of these, and probably one in the not-too-distant future. Um, there is so much going on with the Andromeda Council on their website and uh, the, the interviews that they do on their YouTube channel that uh, there is always many questions to ask. And we just got to the first line of questions uh, about the AI. And we really didn't get past that. And we just sort of organically branched out uh, from that foundation. Uh, so it was good. It was great. It, was, it went in a direction I couldn't have anticipated. And sometimes that's the best of directions. Um, I prefer to do interviews that are you know, maybe a mixture of uh, questions that I have in my mind beforehand and then just organically evolving from those starting points and going perhaps in a completely different direction. So, yes, more of that to come. Uh, I want to thank you all for listening. If you like The Melt and you would like to see it continue to exist and expand and even get better, um, feel free to go to my Patreon page, www.patreon.com slash The Melt Podcast. And there you can subscribe for as little as a dollar per month um, just to generate some uh, sort of consistent income to come in so that I can, I know that I have that to work with in order to, to beef things up here, to make it better and to bring you a better show and with a more widely uh, varied group of guests and hopefully documented experiences too. Um, so yeah, I look forward to doing more of that. And also on the Patreon page, um, you can see video versions of, uh, some of the interviews that I've done here on the melt as of yet. And sometimes I will post the video versions of the interviews there before I post the audio versions on the regular feed. So there's that. Uh, and I am always taking stories from people uh, of their firsthand experiences. Um, you can even record it on your phone and just send it to the Melt Podcast at gmail.com. And if there is a show where the subject matter of which you have a story about, uh, where the two fit together, I will include it on that show as I have intermittently through past Melt episodes. I look forward to doing more of that in the future. So please send your stories to that email address. And also, if you have guest suggestions, you can send them there too. All right. Uh, I have a couple of more episodes in the bag. I just have to post them. And uh, they're great ones. And I've got many more coming up. I'm pretty much booked through February. And I've got a lot of great stuff that I'm very excited about coming up. So Thank you all so much for listening. Feel free to subscribe to The Melt on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, um, iHeartRadio. Uh, I know there's something I'm missing and I can't think of it. <laughs> but there. And uh, not only subscribe, but rate. If you want to write a review or just give us a good rating, that would greatly help um, this podcast get out there even more. So thank you ahead of time for that. All right. Thank you all so much for listening. And until next time, take care. Mm -hmm.